So I think it's safe to say that I'm most well known for my work with high voltage. As it turns out though, I've been into chemistry much longer than electrical science, and I'm actually working on my degree in chemical engineering. Needless to say, I know a few things about working with chemicals. So in this video, I'll be talking about where I get my supplies and giving a few tips on getting your own home lab started. The best place to start is probably glassware. For some experiments, old jars and bottles will work fine, but for other things, actual flasks and beakers are needed, especially if you intend to heat or distill stuff. For bare minimum setup, I'd recommend getting at least a few beakers, flasks with stoppers, and test tubes. Beakers are great for boiling and transferring things, and flasks are awesome for gas generating or air sensitive reactions, as well as distillations. Test tubes are also super handy for small scale tests and heated reactions. If you want to do more advanced experiments though, I totally recommend buying a few support stands and a proper distillation setup with ground glass joints. You can do so much more with a glass distillation setup that I would say it's totally worth the hundred bucks or so that it'll cost you. At this point, you may be wondering where you can get things like flasks and distillation apparatuses. I personally get all of my labware from the Home Science Tools website, but you can find quality equipment on Amazon as well. I'll drop a few links in the video description for those interested. Now, there are a few other items that I would say are totally worth your money. First off, a blowtorch. Trust me, once you have one, you'll understand. They come in handy very often. Next, a cheap blender of some kind. Let me put it to you like this. Sometimes you're just trying to do a reaction and grinding the ingredients by hand feels like it's taking forever. In times like this, an electric blender could really save you a lot of time and unneeded stress. Another thing you might overlook at first is storage bottles for your chemicals. If you're synthesizing chemicals, then you'll probably need some place to put them. Since jars won't cut it for things like fuming nitric acid, you'll probably want at least a few proper storage bottles. Finally, you should definitely look into a hot plate with stirring. These can be a little more expensive, with the cheapest models being around 70 bucks, but having one opens up a whole new world of opportunities in regards to chemical synthesis. I'll put a link below to the one I have. Now for the interesting part. Where do you find the chemicals to do experiments with? Well, this tends to depend on what you're trying to do, but there are a few main chemicals that tend to find their way into a lot of scientific procedures. For the sake of time, I won't be talking about chemicals you can easily buy online, like potassium permanganate, or super obvious ones like aluminum from aluminum foil. These chemicals are all ones that can be found in common supermarkets and stores, at least in America. I could just tell you where they are and where you could find them, but where's the fun in that? Instead, we'll be going on a little shopping trip. I've been meaning to stock up on chemicals for the coming year, so I might as well use this trip as a fun educational experience. Let's start with an easy target, Walmart. You can find basically everything you'll need in this store, and if not in the store, then on the website. The first chemical we run into is actually one of the most useful and versatile, concentrated sulfuric acid. I didn't know you could buy this in stores until recently, and at Walmart it's also dirt cheap. This brand is also fairly pure, so it's on my list every time I go chemical shopping. In the same aisle, we run into another useful chemical, bleach, aka sodium hypochlorite. You can do a lot of stuff with this chemical, and you can get a gallon of it for less than 5 bucks, so it's totally worth picking up. After checking the cleaning supplies aisle, we make our way down to the paint section to look for solvents. Sadly, a lot of the good ones like toluene and dichloromethane are being phased out, so you won't find them really in stores anymore. Fortunately, you can still get a jug of acetone for pretty cheap, and check that out, a gallon of hydrochloric acid for under 10 bucks. Next up, the automotive department. I found two main chemicals of interest here, starting fluid and heat. The yellow bottle of heat is pretty much pure methanol, which is actually pretty useful, and the starting fluid contains two useful nonpolar solvents, diethyl ether and heptane. I'll be distilling these out in a future video. My load was getting pretty heavy, so I found a stray shopping cart and continued on to the pool section. But before I go there, I want to show off this stuff which I found in the sporting goods department. Apparently, you can get selenium compounds in gun blue. I might actually revisit this in the future, but we'll see. Anyways, back on track, we find these nice chlorinating tablets in the pool section for under 5 bucks. These are nearly pure TCCA, which is extremely useful for generating very pure chlorine gas upon reacting with hydrochloric acid. Unfortunately, I didn't find any brominating chemicals here, so no bromine chemistry anytime soon. As me and my brother were heading to the checkout, we took a slight detour through the pharmacy, where we find isopropyl alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, and iodine all of which are pretty useful chemicals. The iodine, however, is sold as this iodine povidone, which requires some workup to get pure elemental iodine. I'm pretty sure if I'd looked harder, I might have also found some decent urea or ammonium nitrate in the form of instant cold packs, but oh well. As we approach the checkout, we also managed to spot a battery display, which I should probably mention. You can get metallic lithium from these Energizer Ultimate Lithium batteries, and manganese dioxide from the Ordinary Alkaline batteries, both of which are extremely useful reagents. Anyway, after checking out, my brother and I parted ways and I headed off to my next stop, Lowe's. 
There wasn't really a whole lot here, but there is one chemical that I can't seem to find in stores anywhere else, and that's potassium nitrate, which is sold nearly pure as a stump remover. This stuff is right up there with sulfuric acid in my book, since it is an extremely useful oxidizer and a source of nitrate. I would love to dive into the amazing world of explosives chemistry, but YouTube is rather unforgiving to people who choose that path. After Lowe's, I made one last stop at Atwood's, which is a local store that specializes in country and farm equipment. Here I found sulfur, which is another useful element to have for chemical reactions. I bought 4 pounds for under 10 bucks, so that's pretty sweet. You can see this brand is only 90% sulfur, but that shouldn't matter for most reactions. I also found a few other chemicals here that I forgot to look for at Walmart, mainly ammonia solution and white vinegar, which is just 5% acetic acid. So anyways, there you have it. I know this isn't my usual style of video, but I hope you still learned something from this, or at least found it entertaining or useful. I know not everyone loves chemistry, but in truth, it actually makes for a pretty fun hobby, and it's highly rewarding, at least in my opinion. In my mind, it's kind of like the next level of Legos. With Legos, you can build basically whatever you want once you know how the pieces fit together. Chemistry is much the same. If you know how the universe's building blocks fit together and interact, you can basically build matter into whatever you want and manipulate the universe in ways you may not have thought possible. That's how I like to think about it. Anyways, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, because there are quite a few better videos coming out in the next year. Until then, Lab Coats out.